a telephone transmitter that led Edison to his most startling invention. He suspected that a vibrating needle point would leave indentations on a piece of paper, indentations that could then be played back. They tried it, and it worked enough immediately, that is, they got some a buzzing noise out of the paper when they pulled it back underneath, that they realized that this was a possibility. Then they sat down, and in thinking about it and its possibilities, realized they had just recorded sound. Edison switched from paper to tin foil and actually recorded the human voice. So by turning the tin foil flywheel and getting a constant speed, you can shout into this machine. Testing one, two, three, four. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece as white as snow. The device is a marvel of simplicity. The human voice vibrates a diaphragm, moving a stylus, which leaves grooves on the tin foil. When the machine is returned to the starting point, the grooves cause the diaphragm to vibrate again, reproducing the original sound. In the late 19th century, no one even considered that sound could be reproduced by a machine. All of a sudden, here was something brand new. You could record an event and then listen to it again. The phonograph made him the wizard of Menlo Park. It made him world famous, instantly. In the end of 1877, the beginning of 1878, when people realized he wasn't lying, that he could really do this. Francis Yale worked with Edison as a lab assistant. Fifty years after that, he recalled the reaction to Edison's amazing phonograph. People flocked here in multitudes to hear a machine talk. A simple machine. They could not believe it. I well remember the day when the, pho the phonograph was presented before the French Academy of Science. And two of its most illustrious members got up and said, it is impossible. The man that's turning the crank is a ventriloquist. It's an American Hawks. 